Bonjour. Uh, Parlez-vous français? No? Okay, then I'll speak in English then. Now, you might think that you know the City of Light, but think again. Now, here we're going to be looking at many zany and weird and wonderful facts about Paris that I'd wager not even the locals know. From Terrences to condom machines, that's right, condom machines, I've put together a list of the top 10 things you didn't know about Paris. By the way, Paris is the capital of France. Uh, in case you're wondering, right, we've all got that settled, right, moving on. And we start this list at number 10. And at number 10, before the Nazi armies arrived to invade Paris during World War II, the Louvre, which is the famed art museum, if you haven't heard of it, crack open a book, people, it's a famous museum, was vacated and its contents were secretly distributed among wealthy French citizens who hid them in their houses, their basement, their barns, around the country. Now, don't get me wrong, I completely understand the need to protect the artwork from the Nazis who were notorious art thieves, but maybe that manpower could have been used, I don't know, to stop the Nazis invading Paris in the first place? Are you out of your mind? What's gotten into you? Oh, I'm going to get hate comments for that, I'm sure. At number 9, at the start of the 20th century, Paris had a zoo full of confined humans, that's right, humans, that they had brought in from their colonies in Madagascar, India, China, Sudan, Congo, Tunisia, and Morocco. Now, this was not a slave market. These people were basically just put in there like normal lions and elephants and tigers are today, and people would pay money to come and see them. And when I say people, I mean over 1 million people used to visit this zoo. Back then, I suppose it made sense, but nowadays, if you want to see an Indian or a Chinese person, just go to the doctors. Are you kidding me? Oh, come on. Is it my fault that the Chinese and the Indians seem to be more brilliant than the rest of us? At number eight, there is a brothel in Paris named La Chabanas, which was frequently visited by King Edward VII. Now, King Edward would fill a bathtub full of champagne to bathe in along with the prostitutes. Because nothing's more exciting than sitting there completely naked, surrounded by naked women and getting bubbles up your ass. Strangely, that bathtub was then sold to Salvador Dali in 1951. I honestly don't know why you'd want a bathtub that used to contain a naked royal. Now, there is a group in Paris called Les UX that spends most of its time repeatedly breaking into historical sites and monuments and, wait for it, secretly repairing them, building literally underground cinemas and staging clandestine artistic events. Though I appreciate that this service should be for every city around the world that has historical landmarks that are often graffitied or damaged, but uh, a few of you guys have got a bit too much time on your hands, eh? At number six, Japanese tourists, when visiting Paris, sometimes have to be sent back to Japan because they suffer from extreme shock that is sometimes called Paris Syndrome. Why? Well, I'll tell you, it is because they were so completely unprepared for the reality of Paris not being the greatest place in the world. Wait, 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 let me get this straight. Japanese tourists get to Paris, realize it's not as good as they think it is, and they go home. Bloody sooks. <laughs> but truth be told, though, that sounds like the tourist's fault, because if you want to go to the greatest place on earth, you don't go to Paris, you come to Australia. This video was not endorsed, paid for, or spoken by the Australian government. At number five, in the entire city of Paris, there is only one stop sign and is situated at the exit of a building company in the rich 16th district. Now, you're probably all wondering, how does the Paris traffic system work with only one stop sign? But the traffic system in Paris is mainly based on giving way to those coming from the right. With very little stop signs, you're constantly driving around until you find that perfect cafe or the Eiffel Tower, depending on where you want to go. I wonder if this system is more inducive to uh, idiots driving around like maniacs. Your kid may be an honor student, but you're a moron! <laughs> At number four... <clears throat> oh, sorry. At number four, in 1926, the visiting Ukrainian head of state was assassinated in Paris with five shots from a revolver in broad daylight. Now, that may not be an incredibly interesting thing, but what was interesting is what happened next. The policeman who witnessed the crime walked over to the gunman and said calmly, 
Is that enough? Jeez, talk about being laid back when your copper walks over to the gunman and makes a joke. You know what he should have done? He should have walked over and done a Dirty Harry impersonation. I know what you're thinking. Did I fire six shots or only five? At number three, when the mummy of Ramses II, which is an ancient, ancient Egyptian king, or the mummified remains of an Egyptian king, were flown to Paris in 1974 to be used in a museum display. It was issued a passport that listed his occupation as, and I'm not making this up, King, brackets, deceased. I sincerely hope that the deceased part was put there purely for legal reasons and not to make sure that he wasn't mistaken for an elderly gentleman who had fallen asleep. Kind of makes you wonder. Now, number two... This fact, being an Australian, makes me incredibly proud. There is a veritable population of kangaroos living in the wild in a township of Immense, about an hour outside of Paris, and I apologise if I've mispronounced that. Now, these kangaroos are descended from a breeding population that escaped during a failed burglary attempt at the animal park in the 1970s. Now, as proud as I am to have uh, wild kangaroos running around all over the world, what kind of bunch of morons decide to rob an animal park? And secondly, who is willing to buy exotic animals that people have stolen? I mean, how can a Frenchman possibly get away with walking his pet kangaroo down the street without people asking questions? And at number one, the French resistance cut the elevator cables to the Eiffel Tower to keep Hitler from visiting the top during his visit to Paris after Paris fell at the start of World War II in 1940. True story. When faced with the prospect of climbing more than 1,500 stairs, Hitler, perhaps wisely, opted out. Woo, way to go French resistance! Now I'm no military genius, but that suggests a tactic that might have kept France safe from Hitler in World War I. Just blow up roads, bridges, elevator cables, because clearly the Germans are too lazy to walk. And that's it for me today, guys. I hope you enjoyed this look at some of the strange facts that you may or may not know about the capital city of France, which is Paris, pronounced Paris in French. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit the like button down below. The links to my social media are also in the description. And as always, don't forget to hit that red subscribe button so you don't miss a video from me. If there is another capital city that you want me to do 10 amazing facts on, leave that in the comment section down below. I read all of your comments, and I love love entertaining you guys. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope to see you next Sunday with a brand new video. Gangster Peace.